education? How did your son get an education? Tony Jr., he went to school at the Molly Mine. He went to school at the Molly Mine. And then when we had to come up here to live, he finished the grades here in Red River. And I think the seventh and eighth grades, we sent him over to Eagle Ness for the seventh and eighth grades. And he boarded with Maggie. And we had got a little money, you know, in the meantime. He boarded with Maggie Moots and Emil Moots over there. Johnny Brandenburg also went. And he went over to Eagle Ness. Johnny Brandenburg went and Rodney and Ruth Fink, other kids, they went over to Eagle Ness. But their mothers went and stayed with them, you know. And then he boarded with Maggie and Emil Moots, who lived over there on the ranch. And they drove the school bus. And he boarded with them. So he got to ride the school bus to Eagle Ness. It was Eagle Ness. It was Therma then. It wasn't Eagle Ness what it is now, you know. So that, and then after his grade school, well, he went into Raton. He got his four years of high school in Raton. I went with him and stayed with him in Raton. My husband stayed here, and there uh, wasn't anything to do, but we had dogs in the house, and he stayed here, because there's no business in the wintertime. You'd, you'd starve to death and you'd depend upon Red River. Of course, now that's all changed. It's just as good in the wintertime as it is in the summertime here now, you know. I'm talking about the 30s. I'm talking about the 30s. So he finished school there. Then he had one year of college. One year of college when he got through in 41. He graduated around 37 to 41 in Raton. When he got through, he um, went to Amarillo Junior College. And he finished one year of schooling at Amarillo Junior College. And of course, when he was there, he took, I don't think, I think airplane maintenance or air or something, but anyway, whatever they have nowadays. And then World War I broke out. World War II broke out. And uh, he came home, he wanted, and he wasn't 21, you know, and he came home and oh, he wanted to go so bad. And of course his dad wouldn't sign the papers, but he just, mother like, you know mothers. So he just begged, and so I said, well honey, I'll go and I'll sign your papers. Not that I wanted him to go, but, and, and really I'm thankful that he got the training. He went and he was in air maintenance and got to see the country, got to see the world which he would never have gotten to see. So, and as far as what Uncle Sam gives, that's education and schooling, why we have never asked, as my husband said, if they give it to you, you're gonna pay it back. They're not giving it to you for nothing. That's the way my husband believed. He just, you know, he didn't believe in, he didn't believe in government money. He said, well, son, if they give you the money, you're gonna pay it back. You know, they make us, just like with not to do now, they make those kids, they, those kids have, you know, school now and colleges, they have to pay that back when they get a job. That's why they don't get any jobs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is the reason. That's why they don't get any jobs. I mean, they just get a meager job so they don't have to buy. You read it in the paper every day. I read it in the journal every day where they're trying to get the... It tell names a student in the school, you know? And uh, so, I, of course, I don't believe in that either. So he finished one year, and then he was 21 or 22, and then he met his wife in Raton, and they married and had two children, and lived, they've lived here ever since. The, the children, his oldest boys, will be 39, and the girl is 38. They're in, in California, and neither one of them is married. Oh, what age is 